welcome to Cheesehead Gardening with Erin and Jen. And as you can see, it's late fall in the Cheesehead Garden. Actually in Upper Wisconsin today, I heard they already have two to four inches of snow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we don't. Not yet. And it was really nice this week and now it's getting colder. Yes. So today we're going to do some cooking segments and uh, talk about uh, some things you can do in the make in the fall and what else? Um, cutting your grass really short, right. um, mulching your leaves into your flower beds or garden, mm -hmm. and some other things that you should do in fall. So hang on and we'll be right back. Okay. All right, so we're in Jen's backyard and we're going to talk about cutting your grass for the fall. Usually you don't want to cut your grass really short in the summer because it can burn it out, but in the fall it's really good to do that. Um, it keeps your grass nice and trim, it makes raking a whole lot easier, and it also keeps the voles out of your yard because a few times I didn't mow my lawn really low, like as low as you can, you should lower the blade down. And uh, then there's all these like bumps from the voles, and if you cut them it really low, it pretty much diminishes that. So good idea to do that anytime October, November. Okay, another thing to do for fall, you can cut down some of your debris. And I cut down the plants that I don't want to recede. But if you want to leave some up, I think these are like a Northwood sunflower. Is that right, Jen? I think they're... They look like a petite black-eyed Susan. Right. Um, that the birds will eat this, so when there's not a lot of food in the winter, they will nibble on the seeds. So anything with seeds, like um, purple cone flowers, they love that kind of seed, and it's great to leave that up. It's fall here in Wisconsin, and in case you're wondering what you can do with the leaves that you rake up here, you know, Cory is hard at work blowing the leaves into piles. Then our leaf vacuum, or it's a leaf blower, it's actually a leaf vacuum and blower all in one. So once he has them all in piles, he's going to vacuum them, in, them up. And once he vacuums them up, that vacuum actually mulches them into small pieces. And I use them to line my flower beds. And by spring, they're usually a really good black compost. And if not, they just look like a really nice mulch. This here is the leaf mulch that I put down earlier this spring. So you can see that it just looks like a really nice um, mulch cover for flower beds. You could also use it in the garden. Um, put it on top of the garden this time of year and then in the spring you can uh, mix it in with your soil. It would be an awesome compost mixture to add to it. Well today I'm going to show you, this is a butternut squash and a lot of you probably have these um, left over from your garden because it's one of those things kind of like zucchini where you plant one and then all of a sudden you have a whole bunch of them and even if you have it um, you can find them in the stores really cheap right now and I'm going to use this to make sweet potato fries so yes this isn't a sweet potato but it tastes just like it when you use a butternut squash and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to Use my vegetable peeler. Here, let's shut. Let me get a close up here. Yep. To peel off the skin. That's pretty nice. Of the squash. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Huh. Before we even start this, we should turn our oven on to 425. Oh, let's do that. Would you say 425? Yes. Jen, what are you going to do with all these scraps? Actually, I have a little container I keep under my sink. Awesome. Put them in there until I can take them out to the composter. Look, Jen, you've got a whole crew watching you. <laughs> it's my fan club. You should see when I play uh, rock band on the Wii. Do they also watch? Yes. Although, I, I have to say that one of them that's here, well, I only have these two, but... This one, Roxy, loves french fries. Really? Yes, she'll steal them off your plate and run away with them. Oh my gosh. 
My dogs love Braunschweiger. There. So you cut them in half. Okay. All right. And then once you do that, then you just um, continue cutting until you can make these into the shape of french fries. How thick? Are you doing thick, thin? Do you recommend It depends on thick or thin? how you like them and how long you want to cook them. Okay. And some can be spicy, some can be sweet, right? Mm -hmm. You can just whatever your tastes are. Exactly. And there, there are probably some different recipes online, do you think? I would guess so. Okay. We're going to do ours today with truffle salt. Truffle salt? Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds good. And I never went to school for cooking, so... I would love to go into the woods with pigs <laughs> and find truffles. That's how they find them, you know. I was like, where are Pigs. You, where are they you? sniff out the truffles. Have you ever seen that on TV? Yeah, but I was wondering where you were going with that. Like, <laughs> like I want to go live out in the woods with pigs. I bet my dogs could find truffles. <laughs> they know. look like pigs. They sound like pigs. Yes. I hope they don't taste Gina, how are you? Awesome. We're filming uh, Cheesehead Gardening. I'm not good on camera. You look good on camera. Oh, she ran away from me. We're making fries here. Squash fries. Squash fries. Mm -hmm. I bet you're going to want to dive right into those. Yeah, and then I... The next thing that I do, and this doesn't have to be for everybody, is I put a little olive oil in a bag and right here I have um, my friend runs the olive cellar oh really and so I have some wild mushroom sage olive oil but you can just use plain olive oil now is that Door County no it's right in Appleton oh and um, we're in Appleton Northland oh have, cool by Coriana's oh yeah and um, some people can just, if you don't want to use oil at all you can use cooking spray on your cooking sheets okay but, so I just put a little olive oil in there, and then I'm going to sprinkle in some truffle salt, which I also get at the olive cellar. Awesome. If this tastes good, I might have to buy that truffle salt. And then I throw my squash in there. Don't squash it. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with my jokes, Jen. No, I was waiting for Gina's face, but she's too busy eating Laffy Taffy. I'm having flashbacks of making squash for Gary. Oh, Gary, the lizard, the iguana. And then I shake it all up, and you could probably do this in a bowl too. You wouldn't have to use a bag, but this is my shortcut method. Nice. Make sure that everything gets a little bit coating on it. Shake it, girl. Mm-hmm. Shaking it. Shake it, you won't break it. And then it goes on to the cookie sheet. Mm. I can smell that sage mushroom olive oil. Mm. So they're gonna be kind of a sweet and savory fry today. Nice. And then we'll put it in the oven for about mm, maybe 10 minutes. And I know my oven's not ready yet, but well. Okay. Put it in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna flip it. Great. So we're turning these, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, I thought you were just going to turn the pan the other way. You're really turning these. <laughs> and you can see they're starting to get nice and brown. Oh, they are. And then back in, right? And then back in. All right. All right, Jen, so you got these out. Mm -hmm. You added a little cheese. I added a little Parmesan cheese to them because in true cheese head fashion, 
we should never eat anything without cheese. Yay! So now they're ready to go. Those look really good. And you can eat them. Except for Gina, who won't eat them. They've got Look, we got we caught Gina eating sweet potato or squash fries. It's just because it has a giant gob of cheese on it. <laughs> ah! All right, nice. This. <laughs> this thing is gigantic on it. Hold on, I gotta tuck it in the zipper. I know. <laughs> the zipper on my tail. What is that? Like the boxing symbol? What side? <laughs> it's festering inside there. I know.